Hello, my name is Pamela Hill and in this video I will explain the changes in Kotlin 1.8.0 related to Kotlin Native and Kotlin Multiplatform Mobile. Let's get started by looking at the changes related to Kotlin Native. We've been working on improving the Objective-C and Swift interoperability by adding some annotations which you can use in your Kotlin code. We've also updated support for Xcode 14.1 and Kotlin frameworks registered by the CocoaPods Gradle plugin are now linked dynamically instead of statically by default. Let's dive into more detail regarding the new interoperability annotations. At object C name can be used to give more idiomatic object of C or Swift names to classes, functions, and properties in your Kotlin code. At hidden from object C can be used to hide Kotlin declarations from object of C and Swift code. This means that the function or property will not be exported by the Kotlin native compiler. And at should refine in Swift can be used to replace a Kotlin declaration with a Swift wrapper. The Kotlin native compiler will mark this function as Swift private, making it invisible to the Xcode autocomplete feature. All these annotations require opt-in because they're experimental. We would love to hear your feedback on these new annotations. Let's see how the object C name annotation would work in practice. Here we are in Android Studio and we're looking at two person classes. So the one is a DTO um, and we identify it by the DTO package name. And the other one is a domain entity, which we again identify by the um, package name. So if we look at the domain transfer object first, you'll see that it has an ID, a first name, a last name, an ID number. But the domain entity looks completely different and it has an ID number and full name. But how will we differentiate between these two classes in Xcode? Let's have a look. Here we are in Xcode and we're looking at creating these two person classes. So first we create the entity person, which is kind of what you would expect. But when we create the DTO person, we have this funny underscore character following the person uh, class name. And this, this looks rather odd and isn't quite what we wanted. So how can we use the object C name annotation to make this look a little bit better? Let's see. And we're back in Android Studio where we're going to use the at object C name annotation to give the person DTO a nicer name. So we will call it person DTO. And notice that the squiggly line is there because our annotations at the moment are experimental. So remember to opt in for these annotations. Let's see how it's going to work in Xcode next. So back in Xcode, we can see that the person underscore class can no longer be found if we compile the project. So what we need to do is we need to use person DTO in order to um, get the project to compile and to use the person DTO class. Next, let's have a look at how we can use the at should refine in Swift annotation. Imagine that we've got this DTO class again called person and it has a property called identifier. Now, very often in forms, you can either write in your uh, national ID number or you can write in your passport number. So identifier is a really, really ugly way of doing of implementing this. So your first string in the pair would be the ID type and the second uh, would be the ID number. So let's see how we can use this in Swift. So here we can see how we would access the ID type and ID number. So we would have to use identifier and then first, because it's a pair, uh, or for ID number, it would be second because it's the second parameter of that pair. This is really ugly and also not really very readable. So let's see how we can redefine this in Swift. In Android Studio, all that we need to do is use the at should refine in Swift annotation to indicate that we want to actually refine this a little bit in Swift. And remember to opt in for this experimental annotation. Back in Xcode, we can define an extension on the person class where we're basically changing the identifier 
property to be something that is uh, that has an ID type of type string and ID type and number of type string as well. And we're using the underscore underscore identifier, which is exported by um, the Kotlin native compiler um, to fill in this ID pair. Now it's called underscore underscore identifier because we don't want to make it visible to the autocomplete feature of Xcode. So what we simply do is we use the first property of the pair and the second property of the pair to fill in this person's identifier. When we want to use it, it's so much more readable. We simply use identifier with ID type and ID number. And that's um, basically how it should refine in Swift works. We want to thank Rick Clefas for making this contribution and for providing great examples on usage of these annotations. Next, let's look at the changes related to Kotlin Multiplatform Mobile. Kotlin 1.8.0 introduces a new Android source set layout, which will replace the existing naming schema for directories, as it's quite confusing. A good example is the Android test directories for Kotlin and Android source sets. For Kotlin source sets, this directory is for unit tests, and for Android source sets, this is for integration tests. This is rather confusing. So instead, the new layout uses explicit folder names such as Android unit test slash Kotlin for unit tests and Android integration test slash Kotlin for integration tests. This new layout will become default in future releases, but you can enable it now using the following Gradle option. The previous Android style directories is now discouraged and 1.8.0 marks the start of the deprecation cycle in including a warning for the current layout. These are the changes related to Kotlin Native and Kotlin Multiplatform Mobile for this release. Please consult the accompanying documentation for more details and have a nice Kotlin.